What's going on, everyone? So Christian Wood to the Lakers makes things very exciting, right? Lakers are now, in my opinion, the deepest team in the league by far. I think that you can make an argument they have the best roster front to back in the entire league. Obviously, chemistry and relationships and is Wood going to be willing to buy into whatever role is asked of him? Is he going to be a locker room issue, right? Are guys going to be able to put it together? Is Darvin Ham going to be able to flesh out the rotations and stuff? Are guys going to be able to stay healthy, right? There's still a lot of things that go into to winning the game of basketball outside of just a roster, right? And, you know, same thing with like a team like the Phoenix Suns, right? Phoenix on paper, give them the NBA championship right now. But in reality, how is it going to work? Is Bradley Beal going to be comfortable being the third option and only giving you, you know, 15 a night and playing point guard? Is that even going to work? Are they going to be able to stop anybody defensively? Things like that. You look at the Lakers, they're probably going to be the best defensive team in the league. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're top three to maybe even number one offensively. I think they are at least top five offensively. And I think that they are the number one to three defense. So to put that in perspective, the only team that was top five in offense top five in defense last year were the Boston Celtics. Every other team was not uh, top five in both categories. I think the Lakers will be one of, you know, one or two teams in the entire league that are top five in both uh, categories. I think Lakers average probably around 120 points per game, right? Put that in perspective. Lakers averaged uh, just a hair over 116 points per game last year. So to think with this roster, this depth, this talent, Right, a full season of emerged Austin Reeves. You have a full season of D'Lo and Rui and guys like that. That these guys can't give you 120 points per game, which would only be four more points than last year. I think is silly. Now, will they? I don't know. We'll see. But the idea of them doing that, I don't think is far fetched at all. So you're looking at the best defense, probably the best offense, or top five in both. Right. But one of the things that Christian Wood coming to Lakers does, besides add the kind of cherry on top is it adds a log jam to a already log jam, right? As far as like, we have so many just sizable wings. And yes, Christian Wood is going to play the four spot or is going to play the five spot and probably be the primary backup for Anthony Davis. But he is best suited at the four. And I imagine the Lakers do play him in spots at the four, but then you look at the rest of the roster, it's like you got Rui Achimura, LeBron James, Anthony Davis wants to play the four, right? You got, you know, Torrey and Prince, right? Like Jared Vanderbilt. Like the list goes on and on as far as like guys that can play the four spot. You literally have like eight guys on this roster that can play the four spot and like six of those eight could play the three spot, right? Everybody except for... Anthony Davis. I mean, you might even be able to play Christian Wood at the three, right? Like, I mean, look at like what they, what the Jazz do with Laurie Markinen, right? And Christian Wood is actually a really good defensive uh, perimeter guy. Like he's good at staying in front of guys that are usually a little quicker. He kind of gives them space, stays back. It is good at blocking the shot, right? And he could shoot the ball at like 38%, right? So, I mean, not saying that they will, but it is something that could happen. So, you look at this and it's like, how can you make this work? And in my opinion, you're probably going to have to have guys in position that maybe they weren't expecting to play. Like Tori and Prince, you could slide to the two, right? That's a, that's a definitely a position that could use a little more depth. But him at 6'7", you know, 6'6", 6'7", he, he's a guy that has played small forward or power forward his whole career and the difference between the three is nothing, right? Like you guard the best player in front of you and you knock down the three ball. That's the NBA today. You got that positionless basketball, three and D guys can basically fit in everywhere. But something that I talked about a little while ago was the idea of putting LeBron at the point guard, right? The Lakers won an NBA championship with LeBron at the point. In 2020, he was the point guard. They had him... Catavius Caldwell Pope. They had, you know, Danny Green at times, right? But it was basically him, Catavius Caldwell Pope. You had uh, Kyle Kuzma, right? Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard. And, you know, then you had, sometimes you had Caruso and LeBron. and, and say, But, like, you look at this roster and it's like, 
you could solve a lot by just having LeBron start at the point guard position, right? Have LeBron, uh, Reeves, Vando, uh, you could go Wood and AD, or you could go Hayes and AD, or you could go Rui and AD, like whatever you want, you could do it that way. And LeBron can just kind of be LeBron. Now, I understand he's older. I understand that he's a guy that, you know, he doesn't want to be on the ball. Like, that was the whole reason that they got uh, Dennis Schroeder. That was the whole point they went and traded for Russell Westbrook, was so LeBron didn't have to be on the ball so much. And I, and I do understand that. But he doesn't have to be, like like Magic Johnson, like running up and down the court. Like He's going to do a lot of the stuff anyway. The ball always goes through him anyway. He's basically the point forward anyway. Now, will he be willing to take more of a step back this year? We did see it a little bit last year, right? He was more willing to let Austin Reeves kind of run and man uh, the point guard position. You know, he was kind of willing to play off the ball more. Like, it was so much so, even the commentators in the playoffs were like, when was the last time you saw LeBron just give the ball up so quickly? Because he was actually playing within the offense. But how much of that was he was injured and couldn't and wasn't able to do as much as he usually does? If LeBron's healthy and good, history will tell you that he, the ball's going to go through him. And if he's a guy that's just going to dominate the basketball, then you might as well just let him be the point guard. You know? Right, I, I just I think that that makes a lot of sense. Now the other alternative is, of course, you can have him. You run like a positionless basketball lineup, right? And so just for position's sake, maybe LeBron's the point guard, and yet or, or, or even the two guard, right? And you have Reeves, who's like the primary on ball guy, right? Reeves wants to be the point guard. He's expressed that repeatedly, and we've gotten reports and heard from the Lakers that the Lakers actually want to use him as the point guard more. They want to give him more of that opportunity. He did it in the playoffs, right? So you let Reeves do it, and he can be the primary on-ball guy, and LeBron can still play off the ball, right? And you run this positionless unit. I think that that may end up fixing and solving a lot because now you have basically D'Lo and Rui along with Christian Wood, or if you start Christian Wood, or if you start Rui, right? But, okay, so let's say, let's say you start, let's say you start Rui, right? Like, let's say it's LeBron, Reeves, Vando, Rui, and Anthony Davis as your starting five. That means your bench five could be Gabe Vincent, D'Angelo Russell, you could have uh, Torian Prince, uh, Christian Wood, and Jackson Hayes. That bench five is ridiculous. It re- now you really have your roster ran out, uh, you know, flushed out. You really have like the you can always mix and match different guys, stuff like that. Or you can just move Christian Wood in the starting unit, which I don't hate either. Or I mean, you could alternate the two based on like matchups, right? Say you're playing Minnesota, right? You could put Wood on Carl Anthony Towns and AD on Rudy. Right, and then go, like I said, with a starting five of like LeBron, Reeves, Vando, Wood, and Anthony Davis. And I think that that would be a very versatile lineup. And look, it so I, I like the idea of the continuity of the starters being what it was last year, where it was D'Lo, Reeves, Vando, LeBron, and AD. That was a roster, that was a starting five that was able to get you to the Western Conference Finals. Keep that continuity, keep those relationships, keep that chemistry built. I think it also gives you the best well-balanced roster. Got D'Lo who can play make. He was really good off the ball. Shot 42% from three, 50% from the field, right? So it gives you that shooting. He can play off the ball or he can play make for others. One of the best plays in all of basketball last year was the D'Lo Anthony Davis pick and roll. You can get some heavy doses of that, right? Gives you that versatility, but he's not a good defensive guy. Austin Reeves, basically a jack of all trades, Swiss Army knife guy, could do a little bit of everything. Shoot the ball, play on the ball, play off the ball, right? He's a good, not great defensive guy, but he's good enough, right? Then you have Jared Vanderbilt, who's arguably the best all ball defender in the entire league. 
And he's going to guard the best player night in and night out anyway. Right? And then you have LeBron James, who's best at the four at this stage of his career because he's not in a position to game in and game out for 30 minutes a game chasing around these younger, you know, just quicker uh, perimeter guys and fighting off screens and all that stuff. It's best to keep him in that scout role. And then Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis. Right? Like, I think that that unit has the best continuity and fit, and the pieces fit the best for that ro- for this roster. But if you wanted to go like bigger, right? Because I mean, the a unit of LeBron, Reeves, Vando, Christian Wood, and, and Anthony Davis is massive, right? Like it's massive. And the only reason I wouldn't go with like a Jackson Hayes or anything like that, again, you could go Rui if you wanted to rather than Wood. But I I, I like the idea of like you got six ten seven three wingspan Christian Wood, Anthony Davis. Uh, you know, is Anthony Davis, best defense player in the league. Jared Vanderbilt, who, whether he's grown a couple inches or not, again, best on-ball defensive guy. Christian Wood can be good defensively. He's had years where he has. It's just the commitment and buying in. You got Austin Reeves, who's a very good defensive guy. Again, not a leader grade or anything like that, but very good defensive guy. And then LeBron kind of playing the scout role. I think that this is another unit that gives you really good versatility. You got Christian Wood who shoots 38% from three. You got Austin Reeves who gets you 40 plus percent from three. You got LeBron and Austin Reeves that can play make and make plays for others. You got good size. You're going to rebound great. Right? Like, I, I don't hate that idea of something along these lines. And I think that this works if you have LeBron play the point. You play positionless basketball, right? Again, LeBron doesn't have to necessarily play the point to play the point, right? You have him kind of just on ball at times, but he could also play off the ball, right? Like, that's the approach that I would go. And I do, I think genuinely that this would make a lot of sense for this roster, right? Like, instead of trying to identify guys in what position they're going to play, everybody just plays basketball right like instead of like oh okay well D'Lo's the point guard Reeves is the two guard Vando's the three guard you know LeBron's the four AD's the five like just put five guys out there that make sense have a nice balance of offense a nice balance of defense with this unit I think you got that you got a 17 point a game guy in Christian Wood you got you know a, uh, we'll see how many points Reeves gets but let's call it 15 points in Reeves right You got 25 in LeBron, 25 in Anthony Davis. And if Jared Vanderbilt can just knock down the three ball with any consistency, right? Like, you got more than enough offense. You could go Rui if you wanted to. Maybe even experiment with Wood at the three. There's just so many mix and match different things that you could do. And I love it. I love the idea of that. You had some more size. You had some more depth. You had some more versatility. Like, I don't know. I I really like the idea, but... Anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Do you think, like, yeah, makes sense. Have LeBron, like, run positionless basketball. Have LeBron as the point guard just for the sake of being the point guard. Um, He doesn't actually have to have the ball. It could be Austin Reeves, like I said, or start him at the two, right? Like, whatever. But anyway, again, love your thoughts and opinions. I have a field down in the comments below.